um, Hannah doing my vlog for eyesight. Um, would have had this done earlier, but I had to spend some serious time working on the lighting in here. I was very yellow a moment ago, and I think I'm the only person in the history of YouTube to be concerned about the lighting on their vlog. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so for this week, we read chapter two of Yes Means Yes, uh, which is edited by Jacqueline Friedman and Jessica Valenti. Uh, chapter two is called Toward a Performance Model of Sex by Thomas Macaulay Miller. Um, and Yes Means Yes is kind of all about uh, affirmative consent and how it's awesome. Um, so we had to answer five of eight questions from Jamie this week. Um, question number one that I chose to answer was, uh, how does sex look as a commodity? What language do we use to illustrate this? And who owns it? Um, sex as a commodity is constructed as women have it and men want it and men petition women to try to get it. And, uh, this is two of the examples that the chapter points out are how uh, women give it up and men get some. Uh, and I suppose if I thought about it, I could probably come up with several more examples of those. And I still might. Because uh, they're, they're pretty permeating and everywhere. <laughs> um, question number two asks, what is problematic about this commodity model? Um, and it's problematic because it constructs a social environment that does not necessarily require affirmative consent, which is tragic, and uh, allows for the construction of women as sluts, uh, which is also pretty tragic, actually. Um, it basically constructs a hostile environment in the community, the global, national, state local community for women. It's um, not a very pro-woman set of beliefs. Um, question number three. How do abstinence advocates see sex differently than Girls Gone Wild and pickup artists, and how do they see it similarly? Um, they see it similarly in that uh, both these groups, kind of the abstinence advocates and the libertines, is the phrase used in the in the text, which I thought was maybe a little overboard. They're not uh, it's quite as. Eh, I guess you could argue that libertine is a correct word. Anyway, both groups see sex as a commodity. Um, however, to abstinence advocates, sex is so valuable, and essentially, virginity is really the only worthwhile thing about a woman. Um, virgins are the most valuable, and the more times you have sex, the less valuable you are. The more partners you have, the less valuable you are. So, you know, you should keep yourself pure until marriage and only have sex in order to conceive children. Um, unfortunately, that is not a choice for everyone because we live in a rape culture. But, um... Even if you assume that it's an option, these people, like, it's so commodified! Ah! I, I can't even wrap my head around it. Um, the libertines, uh, on the other hand, also construct sex as a commodity, but look at it more as a man has more worth the more women he's slept with, the more times he's had sex. So these two kind of go hand in hand. Sort of. They're, I mean... They seem to function, they, they can, they construct sex in the same way, but with opposite results, sort of, except they're not opposite because they're just unjustly applied. Uh, women are sluts if they have too much, too much sex, and men are to be glorified and worshipped and respected uh, by the, uh, number of notches they have in their bedpost, you might say. Um, question number four asks, what is a nice guy and how do nice guys explain rape? Um, nice guys are sort of, you know, your average guys that, you know, construct other guys as, as jerks. They think some guys are, are jerks and that they're, 
you know, the nice guy says, well, I'm not, you know, trying to get you drunk and sleep with you. I'm not, you know, playing games with you. So I'm a nice guy. And there are these things that I should, you know, that I... Nice guys sort of believe that there's a, a code. Okay, so... I don't know if you have, like, a lock on your garage or something where there's a keypad. But essentially, nice guys think that if they punch in the correct numbers in the correct sequence, then the garage door slash vagina should open for them and become very frustrated if this does not occur as they believe that it should. It's sort of like if you have an easily frustrated person trying to punch in that, you know, four-digit code or whatever, and they think they're punching in the right one, but they're not. Um, and, you know, this obviously is, is problematic in several ways. Um, essentially, these nice guys think that if they do all the right things, then they're entitled to sex, and that, you know, if they've done all these things, if they've taken you to dinner and paid... And, you know, if they gave you a ride home, then you have to invite them upstairs. And even, you know, maybe you do want to invite them upstairs, you know, and have some coffee or something. And so if you invite them upstairs after dinner, and you're sitting, and you're like, Okay, you can go now. I'm gonna go to bed. They can take that as a rejection. Um, and they see that as unfair, and so rape is a justifiable reaction to this rejection. Um which is horrifying, is absolutely horrifying. But, I mean, you know these people, and this, this comes up so much in our daily language. Like, oh, I can't even... What's an example? Well, I don't know, just any real sense of entitlement regarding sex is terrible, and um, I don't believe that rape is ever justified. So... The fact that the commodity model sort of, you know, they gave something, they need to, they get something in return, feeds into this nice guy mentality is, you know, another reason why we should do away with the commodity model. Um, and another reason is, as stated in question number six, how is the commodity model heteronormative and phallocentric? Um, it assumes that sex, it assumes sex between a male and a female, essentially, and uh, as the chapter pointed out, um, it asks, who's the girl in gay relationships, uh, and paints lesbians as unwilling to give it up to men. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really interesting about that, or one of the comments that I have is that I have a, a friend who's, who's in a lesbian relationship, and her girlfriend came over and, and spent the weekend a while ago, and she lives in the dorms at a different university. And her, her RA said, Oh, so who's, who's the guy? You must be the guy because you're taller. Like, it was, it's so bizarre that society is so heteronormative. And, uh, yeah, the commodity model sort of constructs that, or relies on heteronormativity, um, and essentially requires a male which makes it fellow-centric, um, or penis-centric. My gender in film class sort of argues about the differences and the disparities between the penis and the phallus, but that's a different vlog for a different day, possibly, maybe, if you're lucky. Um, and yeah, so the performance model is a much better thing. Think of it more, think of sex more as working together and as of partners as equals, and society could improve a great deal and thanks for watching and I hope you're having fun and see you next week